نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسل ربنا بالحق الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أنعم علينا بنعمة الإسلام ووفقنا لاتباع نبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم يا رب لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفوته وخيرته من خلقه أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح للأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين من ربه وترك أمته على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين واجعلنا منهم ومعهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أحينا على سنته وأمتنا على ملته واحشرنا في زمرته وتحت لوائه مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا, فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة My dear brothers and sisters A few dozen of the members of this blessed community and the other masajid around the world I'm um, sorry, around the, the area, actually people from around the world, mashallah, just came back from uh, attending or after attending the mass ICNA convention in Chicago, the Muslim American Society and the Islamic Circle of North America conference or convention in Chicago. And inshallah, in these few minutes, I would like to share with you some of the reflections from this, from this convention. First and foremost, the fact that this convention took place and the fact that more than ever, you know, people showed up in the thousands. The estimated attendance of the convention was about 15,000 and probably more, which is more people, more Muslims attending than ever before. This convention has been happening for 14 years. There are usually, there are two national conventions, Mass and Ikna. They cooperate in two conventions, one that takes place usually between May and July, and one that takes place at the end of the year. The one that takes place in May and July is mostly the Ikna convention with contribution from Mass, and the one at the end of the year is, is the other way around. It's mostly a mass-run convention with contribution from the brothers and sisters of ICNA. And you probably know these two organizations are very similar and they, are, they really are American organizations that are based on the roots, the, 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 the roots of Islam and based on the objective of calling people to be true to their religion, true to their deen, true to their identity, and also true servants of, this, of the country that, that we live in. So this was in itself to have 15,000 people show up in the middle of all the Islamophobic attacks and all the negative campaigning and all the media and all the, the fear mongering. That in itself was a message, a message to ourselves, to Muslims and to the community, to society around us, that Muslims will not be intimidated by these Islamophobes. We will not be scared to hide in our homes and try to 
lie below the, the radar or under the radar as they say and just pretend that we're not here. No, we are here and alhamdulillah and inshallah we're here to stay. So this is the message number one. Muslims came out in numbers that are precedented to say to the Muslims, the rest of the Muslim community and to this country that we are part, we are an integral part of this country, we're an integral part of this society, we are here to stay, we have our American identity and we have our Muslim identity and we are here as part of the fabric of North America and fabric of this country. My dear brothers and sisters, the theme of the convention was وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ The ayah or the part of the ayah, the ayah from Surah Al-Anbiya. That the, the convention, the, the line or the strap line, if you will, was Muhammad, mercy to mankind. Rasul Sallallahu was sent as mercy to the entire creation, not just to Muslims. Those who believe in his message and his prophethood, but also to those or for those who don't. Because by making the, the entire earth a better place to live, who is going to benefit? Not just the Muslims, everyone will benefit. Brothers, I keep, please remind you of moving forward. You have people in the, please, please, I get the message, the signal from the back, please move forward, inshallah. Inshallah. Move forward and fill the overflow room, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mercy. He even described himself in the hadith, the authentic hadith narrated by Al-Hakim. Al al he said, Innama ana rahmatul muhda. I am only, I am nothing but a mercy that has been given to this creation as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our Prophet, my dear brothers and sisters. This is our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet وسلم, himself is no longer with us. He, but his message lives. And who carries this mercy? Who carries this message of the Prophet وسلم, it's, it's all of us. It's the Muslims. It's the follower of Muhammad وسلم, The followers of Muhammad They are the ones who carry his message. The message continues until the end of this earth, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inherits the, the entire earth and those who, who, who live on it. But we have to carry this mercy to want to first and foremost to the place where we live. You know, where do we come from? We come from the, the we are the children of Adam. What are we doing here on this earth? We are the, 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 the deputies, if you will, or we are the appointees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of this earth. This is the, the maqam al-khilafah. These are the one, we are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has entrusted to establish and to, to build and fix and reform and to establish His way on this, on this, on this planet. So we are the carriers of the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How do we carry the message is not is is much much more about who we are ourselves about what we are before it's about what we say or what we do so how do we become mercy we become mercy to humanity we become mercy to the whole creation by following more and more the character and the example of our, our beloved Prophet Muhammad I cannot teach someone to be merciful just by telling or teaching him or her what to do. For someone to become a mercy, then you have to work, we have to work on ourselves. We have to follow the, the example of the Prophet in its entirety. That's the whole idea is that we become mercy by becoming more and more in our limited capacity as you know fallible human beings as weak human beings in our limited capacity to become more and more like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the quran that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is our example laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana 
Uswa in what? Example in what? Example in everything. And in the more, in the, in the deeper character is much more important to follow than the outside behavior. The outside behavior is, is wonderful. It's wonderful to walk and speak and move and dress and, you know, and act like the Prophet ﷺ and we are commanded to do so as much as we can. But it is much more important and also much more difficult to follow the character of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet himself was a mercy. Mercy was not just something that he did or something that is outwardly. He himself was a mercy. He cried, he cried and he prayed and, and he was so, so saddened by the fact that people are not following him. That he tells his, his companions, I am like a person who in the middle of the darkness, who lit a fire and then the, the, all the insects are coming not knowing that this fire is going to burn them and is coming these insects are coming and falling into the fire and I am trying the Prophet ﷺ saying I am trying to push you away from the fire and I'm taking I'm grabbing you from your waist as he said in the hadith so that you don't fall into the fire this is how merciful the Prophet ﷺ was so how can we become mercy mercy comes from as I said from the inside we have to struggle we will spend maybe we will spend inshallah all of our life in this struggle but it's a it's it's a wonderful struggle and that struggle is to achieve what is called the peace within or the inner peace inner peace we cannot be agents of mercy we cannot be agents of peace unless we have this peace within ourselves how do we have inner peace it is by knowing exactly where we come from. By knowing who put us on this earth and why. By knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who put us on this earth. And he said to the angels, I have appointed someone to take care of the earth. And he tells us also in another place in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ we have to, in, with, I have only created, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has only created ins and jinn in order to worship him, to know him, to serve him, to establish his way on, the, on, on, this, on this planet. So this is the first step, is to, to know where we come from. We are the appointees or the ones that entrusted, and this is true for the entire humanity. But it is especially true for those who believe in the divine message and those who believe in the message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we've come from this is where we where we came from and second is what is our purpose well, our purpose is to be mercy to mankind to mercy to humanity mercy to the whole creation that will keep us focused because if i am supposed to be mercy i am not to do any i'm not going to do anything that actually contradicts this this mercy i am supposed to be the source of peace on this earth muslims are supposed to be the primary source of peace on this earth then why do we do that because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created us one of his names is as salam we worship our Lord, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whose name, one of the asma al-husna is as-salam, the giver of peace, the one that gives peace and the one that commands peace and the one whom when you know, you achieve peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as-salam. And we are the ones to establish as-salam and to establish a rahma peace and mercy on this earth. Then, Third and, pro and equally important is that we are always on the right side, on the right, on the side of truth. Which means, in most cases, that we will be siding with the oppressed, with the weak, with the poor, against the oppressor. So, when we practice our deen, 
We practice our deen when we, when we try to follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is a mandate, it is a mandate, it's an obligation. We have no choice, but we have but to be on the side of the oppressed, on the side of the weak, of the, on the side of the poor, against the oppressor. The side of the poor, no matter who that, or the, the weak and the oppressed, no matter who that is, regardless of, 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 of religion, regardless of color, regardless of status, anything, anyone who is suffering from oppression, we are on their side, or we should be. And we should be against the oppressor, whoever that oppressor is. Could it be a government? Would it be a tyrant? Would it be, you know, a wealth, wealthy or corporation or some, anyone who's trying to do harm and do injustice to people anywhere in the world, but in particular in this country, because this is where we live, but in the entire, on the entire globe, we are his, we are that, that countries or that, Gov you know, government or that um, ruler or whatever we are to stand up for, uh, for to stand up to them and to try to stop this injustice from happening and this how we achieve peace my brothers and sisters so first and foremost we have to know where we came from who put us on this earth what is our job Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, He defines, you know what, there is no clearer job description in the entire world than the one that is detailed in the Quran for us Muslims, for the believers. Khalifa, we are the caretakers of this earth. Illa liya'budun, that our job is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ummatan wasata, so that we be the, the, the ummah of justice. One of the meanings of wasat is justice. The ummah of justice. And shuhada ala nas, we are witnesses. As the Prophet sallallahu is witness upon us or for us, we are also witness, witnesses upon the entire humanity. And we will be performing this role in this life if we follow the example of the Prophet sallallahu and in the hereafter where the entire humanity will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslims will be the ones to bear witness on the umam, on the nations, on the peoples that came before us and that came after us and, and, and are the entire creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we embody this mercy, we embody this message of Islam and that inshallah will be the best example for mercy and peace in this life أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد Brothers and sisters to be a source of mercy and a source of peace it is not the sometimes people's mind go to you know just to be keep silent stay away isolate yourself be indifferent you know because what because i'm i'm trying to achieve peace no no brothers and sisters peace will never come from being isolated or from being indifferent or from being away from the action it's the exact opposite peace only comes when we stand up for what is right I want to be able to have a clear conscience that I have tr I've tried my, my best so that when I go to bed at night, I don't stay awake thinking why, you know, this, there's so much and, and we, get over, we get overcome and overwhelmed sometimes about how much injustice and how much uh, tragedies, how much, you know, tyranny exists in this world and we feel helpless. But in order to go to have a clear conscience, I ha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects from me not to, to fix the world tomorrow, but to actually to do what I can, to do my best. Then I will have a clear conscience when I go to bed at night, and inshallah I will have a good argument when I stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And peace can only be established in order to establish peace. 
You have to establish justice. You know, we all, we all are familiar with the slogan, no justice, no peace, right? There's, you can't be, you can't have just, peace without justice. Very sadly, we have within our ummah now, people who are considered to be some of the top scholars, and they are talking only about half of the picture. Someone came here to the UN and he was addressing the, 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 the Vice President of the United States as a session of achieving peace. And this, this scholar said, it's very, it saddens me, saddens me even to sit there and listen because you know, someone I respected so much. Sit there and said, um, there are two reasons for the commotion or the lack of peace in the world. One reason is tyranny, al-istibdad, and the other reason is extremism. And, okay, as I said, alhamdulillah, he's going to talk about the whole picture. No, but he said, I am not going to talk about al-istibdad. I'm not, I'm not talk, going to talk about tyranny. That we can do at some other time, in a very dismissive way. That we can do some other time. Let's now talk about extremism. And believe me, my brothers and sisters, there's no way you can address this issue of peace just by looking at half the picture. Extremism is evil. There's no doubt about that. But by looking only at this, the half of the picture and ignoring the other half which is causing the extremism to a large, large degree, you're actually giving more and more reason for those, for the extremists to actually recruit more people. To say, see what you, you who, those whom you consider to be your top scholars are saying? They are actually ignoring the cause. And they are just living, they are living, coexisting with those tyrants. So come join us. That's what the extremists would say. So my brothers and sisters, you cannot have peace in a society where some lives matter more than others. Absolutely impossible. When a child, a black child playing with a toy gun, he gets shot and killed. While a person who goes into a church and kills nine people, an adult goes and kills nine people and then they take him in custody and they make him make sure they protect him and so on when a someone just for just for for you know carrying a knife very far away from the police officer and that person or whatever he is doing and he seems mentally disturbed and the police just spray him with bullets because he's black while a, a, an, a woman would point a real gun a real gun, real gun at, at an officer and they still they somehow were able to immobilize her without killing her and taking her into custody. Why is that? You cannot have peace when you have these double standards in society. You cannot have peace when we as a government or our government in our name with our tax dollars that we support tyrants and then we wonder why is, where is this extremism coming from? It's coming from tyranny. It's coming from, of course, there are other causes for extremism. This is not the title of the khutbah, it's the, the causes of extremism. But one major cause, and maybe the cause number one is tyranny, al-istibdad. Al-istibdad aslu kulli fasad fi fi hadhi dunya wa la billah. So we cannot wonder why there is no peace while we have these double standards. So my dear brothers and sisters, in order to end this, inshallah, we have to realize that being mercy to, ma to humanity, we have to be engaged. We have to be engaged everywhere, professionally and socially and economically and politically. Our sheikh, a couple of, of or, or last week or the week before, our sheikh was saying that we have to get and join the different law enforcement agencies, join the military, join the, the government to be involved, to be involved politically and economically. And we really have to start talking about and addressing these issues 
very seriously in our communities in order to learn what to do and how to do and how to get engaged and get active without violating our own Islamic, our own principles of Islam. How can we do that? And it is possible. It is possible. What we need to do more and more, inshallah, to discuss more and more. And last but n and, and finally, you know, this, this battle or this, what we are having now, Islamophobia, my brothers and sisters, Islamophobia is not a reaction. It's not only a reaction, I should say. There are people who are reacting. The people who are like ignorant about Islam and Muslims and what we stand for and so on. And, and I, I, I mentioned this before. There are people who are just, who don't know us and they are afraid of us because they don't know. But those who are moving, those, you know, there is millions and millions of dollars that are being spent to feed organizations whose pure charter only 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 role is to spread islamophobic rhetoric islamophobia is not a reaction it's a plan islamophobia is not domestic or local it's global the the, the objective of islamophobia is to, to demonize muslims all over the globe to make us look evil to make us look like we are the ones who des deserve to be destroyed and deserve to be deprived of, of their freedoms. Why? In order to justify the exploitation of resources in the Muslim countries. In order to justify the remaining of the tyrannical governments in the Muslim countries. In order to justify the continuation of the illegal occupation of Palestine. Is Islamophobia, when you see Islamophobia here, think Palestine. It's not, it's not just a local thing. It is, the, it is an, a global agenda, as I said. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we follow his message and if we follow the, the example of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, لَنْ يَضُرُّكُمْ إِلَّا أَذَا All they can do is just make noise. They just make noise. But in the end, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us, مِنْ تَنْصُرُ اللَّهَ يَنْصُرْكُمْ وَيَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَكُمْ all these ayat from the Quran, they are telling us that if we are on the side of truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all into following the example of mercy of his beloved Prophet وسلم, and to enable us to be among those who serve the, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through serving our country, through serving our fellow citizens, through serving the needy to serving the poor i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this community a beacon of light i want this community to be the light of this entire area of of patterson and clifton and all the surrounding areas i want people who are not muslims i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that people who are not muslim and they feel they are in need that they feel they are welcomed and served in this place. And I know this is happening, but we need to do it even more because this is who we are. And we need to stop telling people what Islam is not just by words. Islam is not this, Islam is not that. And we should start showing people what Islam is with our actions, with our deeds. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا ربنا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا رب العالمين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه أرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اجعلنا هداة مهديين لا ضلين ولا مضلين اللهم يا ربنا اجعلنا للمتقين إماما برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم وفقنا لما تحبه وترضاه اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك من كل خير سألك سألكه سيدنا وحبيبنا وعبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر استعاذ بك منه عبدك ونبيك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعبادك الصالحون عباد الله إن الله يأمر إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم أذكركم واشكروه على نعم يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة الله